recently acquired by LinkedIn. Come on up on stage. Now, Russ, this is going to be exciting. Now, looks pretty good, right? This is uh, just like Letterman. J exactly. But, you know, the one thing that Letterman has that we're missing is his mug. You know, we really need like a, a coffee mug. Anybody have a, oh, Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will that do? <laughs> World's best boss? Perfect. He carried this around? All right, we got the mug. Thanks, Michael. All right, this is exciting. All right, now, oh, you know, the only thing we forgot that would have been just perfect is if you brought like a, a, a trailer or a clip, like a real celebrity. Well, you know, I learned long ago not to go anywhere without a clip, so oh. maybe we should. Can we, can we roll it? I think we should. All right, let's see what you got. I'm Russell Glass. I'm the former CEO of Vizzo, which LinkedIn acquired about two and a half months ago, and now I run products for the LinkedIn Marketing Solution. I started Bizzo because I was a B2B marketer myself, and being a B2B marketer, I saw all this innovation going on with platforms trying to help B2C marketers, but nobody really helping out the B2B marketer. We purpose-built all of our technology for the B2B marketer, and it allowed us to grow very successfully within a very competitive ad tech space. Ultimately, the partnership with AppNexus has allowed us to deliver real customer value and much more customer value than we could have delivered alone. Awesome. We were just doing our practice whispering, like, you know, celebrities and hosts do. So Russ, I know everyone out here in the audience really has just one question for you. How can I get an exit like Bizzo? Uh, yeah, uh, good question. Well, so in addition, in addition to getting lucky, uh, and you know, I think, I think every entrepreneur should uh, always have their dose of luck, right, as they go through that process um, to be successful. I think one is focus. You know, Bizzo from the very beginning was completely focused on solving a very specific problem, and. By doing that, it allowed us to say no to a whole bunch of stuff and differentiate ourselves. And that's really what got LinkedIn excited, right, was, was the set of solutions we had built that were, were very focused on this problem we were solving. So that's one. And I think it's something that, in general, the ad tech in, industry hasn't been very good at, right? Everything looks more or less the same. And, and that focus on narrow problem solving uh, it has been largely missing. I think um, the second big thing is culture, right? Uh, building a uh, purpose, building a culture that can can last, right? I think you've I've seen a lot of what you've done with AppNexus and the choices you've made, the people you've brought on your board, like double awesome Elizabeth out there, uh, which I love that term by the way. Um, and uh, I think I think that allows you as a company to get through the the ups and downs, right? Because you're always going to have up and ups and downs as startups and when you've got a great culture and people that really want to win and people that really care about what they're, what they're accomplishing, you, you can get through all that. Yeah, one thing I've noticed is, you know, at AppNexus, I like to pretend that I define the culture, but uh, the culture defines me. I mean, it's amazing, at least at AppNexus, to work with people. You saw Adam and Lindsay earlier. I mean, I can't control them. You know, they really have built the culture and we just do our best to, to keep up with them. What I think is cool, though, is that as leaders, we do get to make decisions that define the fate of the company. So are there a couple of like key decisions or moments that you can remember where you really had the impact that, that defined the outcome? Yeah, well, I mean, first of all, you know, let's start with, let's start with why, why I'm here, right? And, and you know, all, my, all the video clips that I bring places mention AppNexus, so you. You know, you. this is very lucky that we had that. Um, <laughs> uh, making the decision to build our business on AppNexus was a, was a huge decision for us. And you know, I think a lot, I, I see a lot of entrepreneurs that come in and, and ask for my advice and whatnot. And they come in and they said, well, we're building a bidder. And that throws up all these red flags for me. Because if you're building a bidder, something that has actually been very well solved by you know, a number of players in the industry, including AppNexus, uh, it means that you're not focusing your resources on creating differentiation, right? You're not focusing your resources on actually solving something unique that 
ultimately is going to create value that someone might be interested in, you know, at, from a strategic standpoint, or ultimately, you know, enabling you to become a, a, a larger public company. And so that was a big one for us. Is we we said, you know what, we're going to allow the experts to solve and iterate on those problems over time, while we solve problems for the B2B marketer, right? Be the experts. You're the experts. Love it. Yeah, you're the experts. Um, and, and interestingly, one of the reasons, one of the big reasons we made that decision was because we started the business originally on Right Media. And there were all kinds of problems with it, right? No offense, uh, as the guy who founded Right Media. Um, and, uh, but, we, but, but one of the things we said was, you know what? Uh, he's going to figure it out this time, right? And <laughs> It's been great talking to you. Yeah, exactly. Uh <laughs> um, and, and you know, I think I, I'm, uh, it was a great decision. So that was a big one. Second big one was, um, you know, the, we had a number of opportunities during the life of the business to say, we should expand into the consumer space. It's bigger, right? We had companies coming to us and say, we'd love to use what you're doing for B2C marketing. We'd love to do what you, you know, use what you have for XYZ. Saying no at multiple points uh, allowed us to you know, see this just wonderful exit and join this double awesome uh, LinkedIn. Yeah, it's great to see. And you know, I'd love to talk for just a second about you know, the future of, of Bizzo inside LinkedIn. Uh, it's a, sort of exciting because LinkedIn obviously has a huge B2B focus. I mean, it's the only social network I really use on a regular basis, um, mainly because you know, it's where all of my contacts and relationships live. And seeing that, it seems like a perfect fit with what you've built. And because of that focus on B2B, it, it seems like a no-brainer that you could really build a world-class media business inside of, of LinkedIn. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, I think a couple of things, right? One is the, the LinkedIn opportunity, you know, first of all, it's a wonderful group of people. And they really do have an, an incredibly exciting mission, right? To create economic value for the world's professionals, right? That's, that's exciting. And I think the world's professionals need that, right? Um, so I love being part of something bigger than just media. And, and you know, supporting a mission like that in the world, I think, is a very exciting thing. Mm -hmm. I think Bizzo specifically allows LinkedIn to take this amazing audience you know, today it's about a third of the world's professionals, and allow marketers to be much more effective at reaching them, right? And putting the right message in front of them at the right time to help them both be better at what they do, but also allow those brands and marketers to, you know, get their message across more effectively. And that's that's just, you know, I, I hit the jackpot, right? Well, I mean, I'm not going to say that. Oh yeah, I think well. you did great. <laughs> you have but. another jackpot. I don't know. We'll see. You have a bigger jackpot you're going after. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> Me too. So I, I think the last question for you, really, um, which is important for all of us, is I, I know that when we sold Right Media to Yahoo, I, I breathed a big sigh of relief, you know, somebody else's problem. Um, but also, I got this really amazing, you know. Mine. It was my problem. Hey, somebody else. Um, but I, I, I got an amazing perspective on the industry, because I no longer had that you know, myopic focus of just running this, you know, this business. And so I'm curious, after your, you know, time at LinkedIn with a different perspective, what you think is going to happen in 2015 for, for all of us in the industry? Good question. Uh, I think, so first of all, I've been there all of three months, so um, I haven't gotten all of the perspective yet, right? But I think one is I'm seeing advertisers really thinking about quality. Right, and, and I think there's going to be a flight to quality in 2015 that we haven't seen since I've been in the industry, mm -hmm. right? It's been very much scale-based. It's been very much programmatic-based. I think we're going to start to see a shift back to quality. Uh, and you know, I know you're going to be talking more about this later today. How do we, how do we get there as an industry? Um, two is, is native. Uh, I think that's a, that's a trend that uh, you know, LinkedIn launched their uh, sponsored updates program about a year ago, and it's by far the fastest growing monetization uh, uh, platform in LinkedIn's history across all business units. Right, so incredibly massive growth on native, and I think we're going to see that continue next year, which is also part of that sort of flight to quality. And then finally, you mobile. I mean, you can't, you know, uh, LinkedIn is about to have its mobile moment. You know, this quarter is predicted where 
more LinkedIn pages will be viewed on mobile than, than on the desktop. And I think we're going to you know, see that uh, across the industry. Uh, and it's going to be another huge year for mobile next year. That's exciting. Well, thank you so much for being our celebrity guest. Uh, best of luck. And uh, let us know what you do with that jackpot. Yeah, exactly. Maybe, maybe when you get bigger, you can spend more on celebrities. Uh, I'm pretty happy with what we got. <laughs> cool. Thanks, bud. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, hey, bud. Good job. Thank you.